So who am I here with today? Hi, my name's Luke. Ashley Ruiz. Uh, you're here with Just Will today. When you've been working in the gig economy, what companies do you acquire to work for? For Just Eat and Uber. What companies do you work for again, bro? Just Eat and Uber. Um, so I work for Deliveroo, I work for Golfer, since I've got a moped. Um, and I work for Uber Eats, but I also have a Just Eat account. I just yeah. don't tend to really use the Just Eat account. Um, how long have you been working in the economy? I've been doing it just under two years now. Okay. Previously before you told us that you've worked between both companies, as in Just Eat in the warehouse and outside of the warehouse. Yeah. What's the difference in your hours between the two? Uh, so I used to do, a, when I was in the hub, I used to do mornings always. Like I never did nights. I, did use, I used to do seven till three, 30, always. But now, uh, I, would, I, I have to do later because obviously the morning's not that great. Okay, so how many hours do you spend working in a week? Um, so once upon a time, um, I used to work at City Centre and I was on a pedal bike doing crazy hours. I was literally one of them crazy 60, 80 hour workers. When I got my moped at first, I started off full time, but I've started to like do less full time now and I've started to do 16 to 20 hours because in the area I deliver, um, if you hit it, at the right time zones and do three, four hour blocks, right. you'll do really good because they really do have a breakfast rush and a lunch rush of and course. a dinner rush. And they, it's very prominent in the area I'm in mean, because where I am in Solihull, there's not as much riders. Um, but I believe that's because of parking as well. Your yeah. Parking's difficult. Um, so I literally work 16 to 20 hours a week and it's bringing me in just over minimum wage. So I'm bringing like, on a good week, I'll be doing like 300 plus. On a bad week, I'll be doing way less than that. I'll be doing 150 pound, 200 pound. Okay. Um, but to some people, that's good for a little 16, 20 hour part-time hustle. We're actually out filming a documentary about the gig economy. Now, if there was one thing that you would say the gig economy really needs, what would you suggest that to be? Um, I'd say we need a lot more support from the people above us, just in general day-to-day -day stuff and more customers, if I'm honest. Towards the money side of things, would you say you still earn the same or would you say it's a big difference? Uh, s some days you can actually earn more, some days you just, it's worse. But that's the thing with the hourly pay when you was at the, uh, the hub. Right. It was, it was nice, so you, you always got paid, you knew you were getting paid if you got the hours. Okay. Whereas this, if you get the hours, it doesn't mean you're getting paid, do you know what I mean? When it comes to working in the gig economy, you work on a moped, correct? Yep. This is here with us right now? Yep. So, what's your monthly insurance like? Okay, so, for the moped itself, I'm not paying a higher rate in terms of insurance for social, domestic and pleasure because I've got no year's claims. But because I'm a courier, I'm looking at £178 a month for this moped, which right. is only valued at 1100 quid. Um, and the problem is there, it's the reason they do it is because there's a lot of riders as we've witnessed throughout today whilst filming this okay. documentary there's a lot of riders who just ride on pedestrian paths um people go get their cbt and the next day they're starting straight away to do delivery work and they're not experienced riders and when you're riding like let's say i do 100 miles on a normal good day um, and when you're riding that long if you're not an experienced rider endurance isn't going to be your your best point so they're going to be tired they're going to make lousy mistakes stop indicating turns stuff like that and that's where accidents happen a hundred percent because of fatigue they're tired and not only that they've sat in the same position and have you noticed some of these guys work crazy hours yeah they do some of them they're out from seven in the morning all the way till like nine ten o'clock what's the, the night. need and it's like i don't understand it like section your day off have breaks have rests have right. lunchtime breaks so on and so forth because if you're just spending constant time on this moped of you're going to be tired and you're exactly. dangerous, not only to yourself, because as ride, like bike riders will call it, cages, which are cars, um, they're, they're, you're, you're a danger to them because you're going to make manoeuvres. And even though you're a danger to yourself because you haven't got a cage around you, you're also going to cause them to have accidents and stuff and like that because well. you're moving around. So you're a danger to yourself and other people as well. Uh, the best benefit is obviously you can come out whenever you want. So there's no restrictions on your time. You can come out all week, all day, or you can not come out at all. It's totally up to you. And you've got freedom to go do other things as well. Even while you're working, you can do other stuff. I know this has nothing to do with you, but today there was bikes taken. How do you feel about the people that are riding off-road bikes to work? Honestly, it's stupid half the time because like, in town, there's so many people, so they're going to get hit. And to be honest with you, they're upgrading these bikes with like massive batteries and blah, 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 to go far. 
but none of them go far. Right. Like, people, they're, they're the decline in jobs that's going like three, four miles, when it's like, mate, you've got the battery for it now, why don't you do it okay. to get the money? So it's a lot busier on Uber, um, and then towards the evenings it will switch over to delivery being more busy. Um, <clears throat> I'd say, in terms of money, Go for pays better per job because I get paid like I could be getting paid like sixteen pound to pick up a parcel from Screwfix. Have you ever felt that working for Just Eat sometimes gives you a little bit of delay when it comes to a restaurant? Oh, unfortunately, I do. Yeah, because, I actually do as well myself. Because we used to be scuba, so we used to get paid hourly. The restaurants knew that, so like they leave us behind while they did Uber and delivery orders. Now that's changed. They still haven't clued on. Right. So sometimes we'll be stood to the side and they'll be rushing out Uber orders instead. Would you prefer that change? I'll, Would you think that it's fair of them to treat all orders the same? I think they because should. Because what I just noticed was, you was inside of a restaurant, uh, Uber car, an Uber rider has pulled up, taken an order after you, left and gone. Yeah. And you're still there waiting. So they in had, my mind, that's not really fair. They had four Uber orders on that counter waiting right. to be picked up. So them drivers are delayed right now? Yeah. That's not very nice for the customer. It's not. Not at all. When you have restaurants that delay you, say, more for Just Eat than Uber, how do you feel about that? Uh, yeah, see, I think it just goes back to when I was working at the hub. Everyone, like, puts Uber, uh, Just Eat to the side. Now, it, now they still give you the delay pay, but it's not worth waiting 30 minutes, 40 minutes half the time. Do you know what I mean? Understood. So it's, it, it is annoying, but at the same time, I. I don't, I don't, I don't go even when I'm working on Uber. I don't walk in and just shove my uh, phone in their face and it just, right. just take yeah. your time, bro. The Patience. More, the more, yeah, exactly. The more you're patient, the more you're good. Otherwise, you're just gonna get restaurants fucking hating you. Yeah. So go for it with parcels. So it'd be like Screwfix is one place which is predominantly on there where okay. I am because I'm near a lot of Screwfixes. Yeah. Um, JD used to be on there, but I don't oh. think it is anymore. Um, but they have loads of little companies as well, like little stores, private, right. and small businesses that have used Gopher to deliver their packages. So I've delivered flowers and stuff before. Yeah, yeah, them, so. okay. I've done flowers and teddy bears on Uber. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's a bit of a strange delivery, isn't it? Yeah, it is. I've done it on Uber as well. On Valentine's Day, I've done right. like some crazy stuff like condoms and everything. But I've also <laughs> done like, I've done flowers, okay. um, Valentine's cards and everything. Yeah, yeah. Uh, because you can order from Sainsbury's, Greg, not Sainsbury's, Greg's even, Sainsbury's, Morrison's, Asda, you can okay, order all so them on. Okay, anywhere is possible then. Yeah, words, pretty yeah. much. Have you ever had a bad experience delivering to a customer? If I'm honest, I've been lucky. Right. I've never had a bad experience. Okay. I've had a few times where I'm waiting a while for them to come down, but I've never had a bad customer. Okay. I've never aggressive, never That's moody. Good. Always, they're just happy to get their food. I hear that. So. What would you um, have you say? What's your best tip? I got £10 once. Oh, wow. And the lady ordered to the wrong address. <laughs> she lost the phone, so she couldn't contact me. She caught a taxi to where I was waiting with her food, and she still gave me £10 for it. Oh, wow. I was like, really? That's wow. lovely. It was. Quite polite of her. I think you need to be more uh, of a community with the restaurant, because like, if right. you think about it, yeah. If you were um, actually more polite and everything like that and like in not walking up to the counter and shoving your phone in their face even if i'm working just eat or uber like you're gonna get along better with the restaurant and you're gonna get your order quicker because you're not actually hassling people right so that's the thing like, of course it, so you see it works two ways correct if you're polite it will work out for you but if you're rude you're gonna wait around a little bit longer yeah so for example like if you go into like for example mcdonald's some people have some riders are so aggressive and they want like that's my food and then the manager's going to be like bro i'm not going to give you the food like, i think that's the number one the order yeah. cancel the order then i'm of not course. like the more you're aggressive with them the more they're going to be aggressive back like yeah. i just stand there it's like mate if i get the order i get the order like it is what it is right like, i could be polite like i've been polite before and there's a, an uber guy there and I've waited longer than him, and then I've got free stuff from the restaurant because right. I, I've been patient. I've and not waited, been yeah, of course. And it's like, next time you go there, they might remember you and actually treat you better. What would you suggest is the best way for them to actually come about using a moped in the gig economy? So what I tend to do, if I'm going to do a full shift, I, I give myself an eight-hour shift, and what I'll right. do in that eight hours, every, say, hour and a half, or hour and 45 minutes, I'll take a 15-minute respite break. Okay. Um, and... So, 
that means like in the time of eight hours i'm gonna have an hour's worth of break of course but it's broken up into 15 yeah. minutes and the thing is when you've not got an order and you're just chilling my advice is don't sit on your bike just chilling because you see a yeah. lot of them like this stretch your legs out get up around. stretch your legs walk go to of the course. shop grab a little snack grab some like a drink yeah. or something so you can freshen yourself up that's it can I ask you a question? You did say that you work for Just Eat, correct? Yes. How do you feel about the shifts? Because if you're capable of working when you want, but you have to book a shift, isn't that a bit awkward? I'm not a fan of it, but on the flip side, I am. Because okay. it stops it being too many riders out at once. Of course. But I'd, I'd prefer it if I could just get up and go. So would you suggest that it's better not having a shift or to have a shift? I think it's better. Not to have uh, it? To have okay. it. Oh to yeah, have to have shift. it. Yes. Oh, okay, cool, fair enough. Unpopular um, opinion, but it, it keeps the amount of riders down. So right. I thought I would get one job all day long. Yeah, so I uh, I think people think we earn more than we do. Right. But like, I think people think, okay, um, just say, oh yeah, I've made 100 in a day, but like you could have sat there for 12 hours one day and then you could have done that in six hours the next day. Of course. So for example, I worked on Sunday, seven till 10. I only done three hours. First hour, 21 pound. Right. Next two hours, I made six pounds. See, people don't believe that you can make 21 to 30 pounds within an hour sometimes. You can actually make, like I said, like I made 21 pounds an hour, but then the next two hours were Sorry. so sh pointless. More than your hourly wage. Yeah, like if, if you're full on busy, you can actually On the right more. day, it's good. But then some days, you, you're just sitting around. Like I said, like first hour, I destroyed it, but then suddenly nothing, so. Right, so. Out of all of the platforms, which one would you say benefits the most for you? For me, um, in terms of how busy it is, um, I'd say Uber because I'm not in Birmingham City Centre, I'm actually up in Solly Hall. So for myself, I kind of look at the gig economy as to say like it's like a big family. Especially when you become close to everyone, you start to bond, spend time out and sometimes it's not that busy. So sometimes we could have more of say sitting around and some days it could be busy. Or would you say some days that it's just, it's a risk? It's, it's a risk. Sometimes you're there for hours with no jobs. Other times okay. you're just getting jobs back to back. So, right. yeah, it, it, it varies on the day of the week. Certainly, it definitely does. So if there was anything that you could suggest to change within the economy, especially being a rider yourself, what would you suggest? Uh, closer relations between the restaurants and the actual drivers. Very true. We don't really have much interaction and you know we're the ones working together to bring the orders to the customers right so, um, so now to my understanding i know that some people don't bother insure their bikes neither food insurance how do you feel about that so it annoys me because like i said if i went around and just got social domestic and pleasure i'm looking at about 48 pounds a month due to my experience my age and the fact that i've i've um, got no claims discount and that's what i pay for social domestic and pleasure now, because I'm part-time, I use Zago, and right. they offer insurance for as little as 70p extra an hour on top of your normal premium. That's quite good. So if you're, if you're working, let's say, 40 hours a week, right. you'd be looking at potentially going and getting a proper plan, like a, a fixed plan, where you'd be paying like 170 pound a month rather than 70p an hour. But when, when you're going up against like doing 16 to 20 hours, you can use the pay as you go thing. So there's always an option for those who want to do, um, like, who want to um, pay their insurance but don't want to pay the big bulk. They have right. this option, so it annoys me because- They can pay pay as you go. Yeah, they can pay pay as you go, and it's 70p an hour. So right. if you want it to work, let's say the 20 hours a week, it's going to cost you 14 pounds more yeah. on, your, on your thing. Obviously the quotes, Differ per person, it may be a bit more for other people at like a pound to two pound an hour, but I that's think depending my quote on their was no claims. Two hundred and eleven pounds with food insurance. Yeah. Altogether. When when I first done this full time, I was paying one hundred and seventy eight pounds a month. Okay. Um, now I only pay forty eight pound a month social domestic pleasure, and then I use Zago um, to get my top up insurance for my food career, right. and that's costing me between about twenty to twenty five pound a week okay. on my hours. That's so, not bad. All in, the most I'm spending is £140 a month. Right. When you're on a moped, you should be making 10 times that. Right. So it shouldn't be a problem to do it. If you have you, to balance out, because exactly. I suppose even now taking the further jobs pays as well. Exactly, I could take further jobs, I'm quicker, so if I take the shorter £3 jobs, 
I'm able to do three in an hour, four in an hour, right. five in an hour. I'm able to do more because I'm on the I'm on the moped. Yeah, yeah. And what's annoying is those who don't want to pay the courier, they don't want to pay courier insurance, food delivery insurance, hire and reward as they call it. If you don't want to pay that because you're worried about the expenses, then self-employment isn't for you and this is a self-employed gig. Of course. Um, and if you're worried about expenses, you shouldn't be self-employed because when you're self-employed, you are liable for your own expenses. Right. Well, bro, I appreciate having you today and um, thank you for the interview. No problem, anytime. We'll see you in a documentary. You take care. Cool, bro. Thank you for your time today, bro. No problem. And we'll see what happens. Appreciate it, man. Cool, man. Well, thank you for your time today, bro. It's been a pleasure talking with you and we'll see you in a documentary. Yeah, man. Sweet. <laughs> <laughs>